So first things first, we have a new camera. We have a DJI Osmo Pocket 3. Um, so it has face tracking and it has object tracking as well. So if I, let's see. So we're gonna keep focused on the gun real quick while we talk about the gun. Uh, fair warning though, it's gonna lose. So if I turn the gun this way, because of the slim profile of the gun and the fact that the gun is black and I'm, I have a black hoodie on, uh, it's gonna lose track and I'm not sure how wonk, wonky it's gonna be. So this is more or less of a test of the camera's abilities while I am uh, recording footage. Uh, so bear with me, please. If it's if it's too bad, I won't publish it. If it's decent enough, um, we'll 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 roll with it, right? So um, this is regarding the Tesis Carry Three. I mean, damn. Okay, <laughs> this is regarding the Tesis Carry DS. Uh, uh, so I turned on the light there because it was a little bit dark. Um, what have we done thus far? We've shot 641 rounds through the gun. Um, there have been no, no issues since the last range visit, uh, feeding wise or ejection wise or anything. So, uh, uh there's only been that one hiccup on that first, uh, range visit. One hiccup out of 641 rounds. So that's, that's great. Um, keep in mind though that, uh, we're gonna we're gonna go to a thousand. Um, I have some new ammo. I have a 500 round batch of Igman, uh, and from my understanding, I've never shot it before. Uh, but uh, some people have issues with that that ammo. I'm finding out after the fact after I've ordered it. We'll see what happens. If all of a sudden the gun starts hiccuping. It's more than likely not the gun. It's almost certainly the ammo. Uh, but since I have 500 rounds of it, we're gonna fire it. Um, typically, this gun has been eating a lot of the ammo that usually causes problems with some of my other guns. So I think it shouldn't have a problem with with uh, with shooting. Uh, now, with that being said, uh, we have made some changes to the gun. Uh, so we have changed the sear spring and we have added a mainspring. Uh, so we added a 19 pound mainspring and the sear spring is coming from EGW. It's an evolved uh, sear spring. Uh, so what I did first was after a last range visit, I still had problems uh, adjusting with the, the trigger wall. Uh, so I, I bought the sear spring to see if I can kind of negate that. Um, so it softened the wall a bit, but that wall did not disappear. Uh, but what I did see was a substantial, like a significant change in trigger weight. So it lost a little over a pound. Someone outside my window here. So uh, I put the sear spring in. And then I changed, uh, I, I did a five pound average uh, trigger pull, uh, and it was at three pounds, five ounces, which is great. Um, yeah, that's well over a pound. Uh, not only that, it just felt, it felt drastically better. Uh, but that wall was still there. Um, it's just not, it wasn't, it wasn't as bad. Sorry for that. Um, but I wanted it, I wanted it softer than what it was. Uh, I wanted it to feel just like my other 1911s uh, and I might have fixed it. So it took me adding the mainspring, the 19 pound mainspring to do that. So that when taking out the OEM spring, I'm not sure what weight that is, but it's definitely heavier than, than 19 pounds. It's probably closer to 22 pounds or sometime somewhat in that area I don't know what the standards are uh, but uh, it, it was definitely heavier heavier um, because I, I I did not use a uh, a uh, what do you call it a uh, I used my fingers my hands um, and of course I used a punch to push it down but uh, um, yeah um, it was 
something I probably shouldn't be doing. I should be having, I don't have a workshop or anything, right? So, uh, so I have no, no, no place to clamp down or anything. Uh, but, um, maybe I should remedy that. Uh, but anyways, there's a defining difference in, in installing and uninstalling, uh, those two weights of a uh, mainspring. Um, and the, the thing I immediately noticed after adding a 19 mount, pound mainspring was the fact that at first the, tr the trigger felt sloppier. Um, so while it softened the wall, it softened the wall almost too much. And there we go. We lost the, uh, lost the tracking on the, uh, on the gun. So we'll track my face for now. Um, so it made the, made the wall mushier and the reset felt off and so I went back and forth between those two springs in the quest of trying to to find the difference what was going on um, and I almost opted to just use the OEM mainspring uh, because I would rather deal with that I mean it was it was it had changed so maybe I could get used to that wall still being there but just not being as soft um, so I was gonna try and and just deal with the wall right uh, but I decided, well, I got the spring here. I put it back in the gun and I said, well, you know what? We'll, we'll go to the range and we'll test it. But in the meantime, while I'm waiting to go to the range, I'm going to the range tomorrow, um, tomorrow evening. Uh, while I was waiting, I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm racking and I'm pulling the trigger and then something must have worn in or something because that slop in the trigger at the wall is no longer there. Um, it, it's, it's it's not crisp but it's it's subtle um it's not slop anymore uh as well the uh the reset is actually different so just in case the the gun is clear because i'm not sure i can't remember if i showed that or not i'll, I'll look in the post footage uh and see but um gun is clear and so i kind of want to show the trigger here i'm not sure i'm trying to figure out how i can do it uh there you go so it's, it's breaking cleanly So yeah, I'm sure it wore in, uh, but we, we shall test it and see soon and I'll let you know. Um, as well, the last range visit we ended up buying before we went to the range, uh, a Springfield Armory 17 round Duramag, uh, mag, and we bought one of those because it was, it was cheap. I got it for 35 bucks. Uh, I had been looking for a check, checkmate, uh, 17 rounder. Um, I couldn't find any and TSIS was sold out. I was looking for to get them from TSIS because I believe the last time I checked uh, their pricing on their Checkmate 17 rounders were uh, 44 bucks. Uh, so that's that's great. Uh, the only thing is I think everyone's aware of those and so they're buying them for their staccatos and everything else probably because that, that, that mag will fit any non-proprietary 1911 uh, or 2011. Uh, so, so yeah, um, I didn't have, uh, I didn't have an issue with that mag. So I used it, I filled it up maybe five times and shot through it at the bottom of each load. That last round would always lock back the gun and it would never feed that last round. So there was a, there was a couple of times where I thought the gun you know, it will lock, was locked back because the mag was empty and I will pull out the mag, I will put another one in and it's all hunky-dory up until, you know, I looked down and uh, the Duramag had a round, had one round left. It wasn't even half stripped out. It was just, it was probably sitting there, but it had never fed. Uh, so I'm not sure what the issue there is. I suppose I can do some, some research and see if anyone else has issues with this, with that particular mag, with this particular gun. 
Um, but, but yeah, I wanted to mention that in case someone else has been having those, those issues. Um, but other than that, I mean, we're, we're ready to rock and roll. The gun's been fine. Um, I'm ready to test out the, the, the new spring set I added in there. The first, that's the first time I've done that for the mainspring and I've never, I've never swapped out a sear, but I've removed and, and replaced sears before. Uh, so when I did, the, when I replaced this sear, I did not, I tuned a new uh, sear spring. Um, when I say, when I said sear those last few times, I meant sear spring, right? Um, yeah, I didn't do any tuning and I still lost a pound and it just felt better. Uh, the, the, the material between the two, uh, the, the, the metallurgy, it felt totally different. Um, the one that comes in this gun is rather rough looking, uh, rough feeling. Um, it's got a funny tension to it. Um, and it was a bitch getting in and out. Um, it's, it's kind of, it's wonky. And that's not the first time I've heard that from someone who owns this gun who who was trying to detail strip it and had to remove that sear spring. Uh, you have to fight with it to get it in and out. Um, it's just oddly shaped. Um, I didn't have nearly the same issue in getting the EGW spring inside the gun. So uh, there is that. Um, we will keep you apprised of any ch other changes or any other issues or whatever with the gun, right? Okay, so bye-bye.